as you can see by the opening thumbnail, this is a Pride soap because we're in the middle of Pride Month. Now, this is the Trans Pride flag, and it's going to be a layered soap. So I'll run you through that in a little bit. But just in case you're not aware, and because I'm a gay creator, we have a responsibility to stand shoulder to shoulder with the rest of our community. And that includes lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and all of the other people that are part of that community. We stand by them. And so this soap is a celebration of trans people, both in the UK and across the world. And as you know, there's a lot of things going on that's making it very difficult for these people to just live their lives and be their authentic selves. I hope by doing something like this and just showing that people are people, regardless of how they started their lives and what they've chosen to be or who they've chosen to be, that people are people and we just need to love people for who they are. Anyway, getting off my high horse on that one, this is a layered soap. And the way I look at I work with layered soaps is basically I work at each individual layer. And this soap follows a pattern. It goes blue, pink, white, pink, blue. And in order to keep the consistency of the colours, I tend to colour my oils and then I add the lie to it. It just means I've got a consistent colour running through each of the layers and I don't have to worry about it. You'll see here that I'm actually measuring out my lye solution. Um, and the way I do that is rather than weighing the lye into the oils, I weigh the lye out of its container. And whilst the scales themselves have a minus on it, it's still the same weight. And I can make sure that I get the right amount of lye without going over in my soap. And that's a really nifty trick that you can use to make sure you don't put too much lye into your oils. And what I'm doing here is using a little mini mixer. And this mixer is something I got from Amazon and I love it. It's rechargeable. It's got three levels of strength and it works really, really nicely for all those small batches. And I'm only doing a four bar batch here. So I'm going to use my little mini mixer just to mix this up. And then I'm going to bring it to a relatively medium trace because I still want to be able to flow and fill into the actual mold itself and let the soap find its level. What I don't want to do is let that soap get too thick or it won't settle and it won't find that level. That's the trick with layered soaps is you have to get the consistency right so that it's thin enough to self level, but not too thick that you're going to get ripples and bumps and you're going to have to manipulate it too much. And what you see here is I'm going to give it a little tap on the table to settle everything down into the mold. The fragrance I used on this one, and I think it's the most appropriate one, is called Unstoppably Bliss. And I think that really sums up what I'm trying to say with this soap and that pride, we just want to have bliss. We want to be happy in the skins we're in. This um, fragrance oil does accelerate trace a little bit. Um, and you'll see that the first hour I did over mix a little bit and you can see the texture on the top. Um, so we're going to move on to the second there, the pink one. And what I'm doing here is I'm actually pouring down a glass rod and I'm allowing the oil just to flow down the glass rod. And again, another little nifty trick for you, if you're trying to get things um, in small quantities, so pouring a small quantity of, of batter into a small container or, or fragrance oil into a small container, if you pour it down the rod, you're actually um, centering that stream of liquid down the shaft of the rod and it won't f go everywhere and you can be a lot more accurate with it. Then what I'm going to do here is I'm going to pop the light onto the scales and I'm actually just tearing it out. I'm going to pull the light up into my little um, pipette here. And I'm a really big fan of these glass pipettes because you can get a lot more liquid into them in one squeeze. Um, they're easily washed up and you're not using throwaway plastic. So it's all good in my book. I've got one for lye, one for fragrance oils, and then I've got a spare one just in case. So I'm tearing out the light solution on the scales and then I'm, 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 you can see how that says minus there. And basically I'm waiting for it to get to the right weight. Um, and I can then put back anything I'm over. And that means I'm not just pouring too much into my oils. And I don't need to worry about whether I've got a, a, a lie heavy portion. The really nice thing about this is, is if you do it that way, you can be sure that you haven't got too much lie in the oils and it's just a nice safety measure. 
Um, so if you're using line this way and making small amounts and you need to split your lie down into different sections, this is the best way of doing it. This is the second layer here. And um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to allow the um, popsicle stick I'm holding to break the fall of the soap. so It doesn't break through into that first layer. Um, and I'm just letting it then spread out so you can see how the consistency is quite important. And this is a really nice consistency. And it's just laying into the mold there. It's finding its own level. It's beautiful, flat and clean. And that's the key with layers is you've really, really got to allow the layer to find itself and then you will get lovely straight lines. You often hear people say quite regularly that layers are time consuming. They don't have the patience for it. They can't do it. Because I'm doing this in sections without making up a lot of batter and having to keep that batter fluid for the whole time, I'm just making what I need as I go along. So it's not really taking any longer than a standard soap would take to pour. Um, and again, lie on the scales into the uh, container. It's brilliant. The middle layer of this soap is going to be a beautiful white colour. and. I actually use white mica for things like this rather than sticking to a titanium dioxide or um, kind of kaolin clay and stuff like that. Um, now, this is Arctic white and it's Arctic white mica. And rather than using titanium dioxide or kaolin clay, I find that this can be a really beautifully white batter. And I use things like avocado oil, hemp seed oil and castor oil, which have a, a colour to the oil. Um, and I find that actually using a white mica is a far better representation of white than trying to use the kind of titanium dioxides and things like that. It's going to be a really pretty white, this. And because my batter does turn relatively white, this is going to be almost pure white. It's going to scrape the little pot down, get everything in there, give it a little tap down to make sure that everything is, is settling. And as I feel the, the side of the mould, I can actually feel that the bottom layers are starting to set up a little bit. Um, so that's quite a good indicator of where I am. And then the little moulds I get are from Amazon. And the trouble with these little moulds is that they bow out sometimes when you put the soap batter into them. Um, you can build a box, but I didn't have any materials to make a box. So I just got a couple of really thick elastic loops and, and those around the side. And it's just pulled the, the mould in enough to keep the shape. And then we move on to the final two layers. We're going to start with the... Um, the pink now because we did a blue layer, then a pink layer, then a white layer, and we want to reverse that. So we want to go to a pink layer and then a blue layer. And again, this is just a repetition. You're just putting the light into the oils using the technique I've showed you, getting it to a nice trace and popping it into the mold. Now, this particular layer, I got a little bit too thick. So you can see that it leaves, it's not really settling as well as I'd want to, and it's leaving quite a, a few of the, um, the wrinkles in the top. And that's fine, but it, it would have been better had I got it a little bit thinner. Um, and that's me just not paying attention. I was watching the telly. I was doing some other bits and pieces. I was there blending away and I let it get too far away from me. So just because we make lots and lots of soaps doesn't mean we make mistakes. And don't ever get disheart disheartened if you make a mistake when you're making soap, because we really all do the same sort of thing. So if we get this one nicely flattened out here and nicely settled into its mould and then we'll move on to the, the, the final layer. And again, it's just the same principle again and again. But again, because I'm working lie into um, oils and I haven't got a batter starting to set up on me, I can take a bit more time on these things. I can I can make sure that everything is absolutely perfect before I go into it. This very last layer here is pretty much the perfect consistency. Um, I could have mixed this a little bit more and you'll see a little bit later on. There are a couple of spots where there's some fragrance oil, but uh, in my experience, if you let fragrance oil sit and it reabsorb and it, it, there's no problem to it and it's got the right amount of fragrance oil in there anyway. So um, but again, if I was going to do this uh, again with this fragrance oil, I'd probably mix the fragrance oil directly into the oils along with the micas before I then split it off and start using the lye. I'm just going to put a little bit of texture onto the top of here because it is setting up quite quickly and I can get a really nice texture into the top of that. Um, and we're onto the cup. Look at that as if by magic. So we're going to release the um, the kind of vacuum that's formed when this uh, sets in the in the mold. Try and get a little bit of air underneath it, 
pop it upside down and then just going to put a little bit of pressure onto the top of the mold there to release that from the mold. And uh, there we have, if I just flip it around onto the side, the Trans Pride flag. Now I've got a little bit of um, additional batter that was up on the sides of the mold there, but you can just plane those off once the bars are cut. So I'm not worried about that one. Um, and we'll cut a little sliver off of the end here, I'll pop some music on, and uh, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the cut, and we'll come back to uh, to see the final uh, the final video of it. And there we have a layered trans pride flag soap. Now look at all of those lines. See how nice and flat they are. They're all consistent layers. They've all got nice crisp lines between them. Um, and you do that just by measuring the way I did the lie and you will never go over it. You'll always have the same amount of batter. It'll always look consistent. It's just a really nice way of doing beautifully layered soaps. Um, and it's in honor of trans pride. So there we go. And here's the final shot of our soap in all of its glory. And you can see just in the corner there, the little bit of discoloration from the fragrance oil that wasn't mixed in properly. That'll be fine. Now, if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a like. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps me grow and it allows me to make so many more videos for all of you and tutorials as well. When you subscribe, don't forget to click the bell icon if you'd like to get notified when a new video is uploaded. and. Thanks a lot, Soapsters. Happy Pride, and we'll see you again next time.